The Fire K9 Pro is the only desktop amp DAC you'll ever need. Greetings mate and welcome aboard Stuart Charles here Home Studio Basics.com helping you make sound decisions leading to a beautiful audio experience that will make you fall in love with music, not gear, all over again. So, Fio's flagship K9 Pro comes equipped with the AKM4499 chip and supports up to 384K, a native DSD256. Utilizing the THX788 Plus module and asynchronous USB via dual femtosecond clocks, this precise clock management system makes it easier to handle any kind of source and maintain the maximum quality possible according to Fio. I will place links down below for all related articles that I've written on these topics. Further, its fully differential design ensures minimal to no noise and reduces harmonic distortion to almost nothing. Included in a 9 pound box, yes that's right you heard me correctly, are a USB type A to type B cable, a power cable, a Bluetooth antenna, a quarter inch headphone adapter, a quick start guide, warranty card, and finally the super mutant behemoth amp DAC roughly the size of big pun. <laughs> A literal giant step up from the K5 Pro, the K9 can do everything that one did but also adds balanced XLR outs, Bluetooth support for all formats, a 4.4mm line in as well as three different headphone outputs including 4-pin XLR, balanced 4.4mm and 6.35mm single ended. This is truly an all-in-one amp DAC combo that can connect to anything and everything. Your USB turntable, your speakers, balanced or unbalanced, your console for gaming, a separate amp, a separate DAC, anything that outputs coaxial in a home theater, your phone wirelessly, balanced from a separate DAC like the Zen via 4.4mm etc. The possibilities are endless. Before you pop a stiffy and start pitching tents, Flip the unit upside down and spank it, I mean check the voltage input, making sure that it matches the country you live in. The all aluminum alloy front left and center contains the headphone outs just mentioned and the giant stainless steel volume potentiometer which makes the K5 Pros look like something you'd find in your local Toys R Us. The built in rubber feet on the bottom ensures the unit won't move, but being that it's bulkier than Arnold in his prime, you won't have to worry much about that. It's dummy, dummy thick. thick. There are RGB indicator lights surrounding the volume knob that vary in color depending on sample rate. Blue is 44.1K, yellow is anything over 48K, and green is DSD. When the unit is idle, the colors will cycle. For instance, pressing pause on your source initiates these color changes and they range from green, red, yellow, white, cyan, blue, magenta, etc. The metal switches and input buttons are super easy and intuitive to use as well, as I can go from listening on my Aris E3.5s back to headphones quickly and easily depending on what I'm pairing with the unit. The input button cycles through five modes, USB, optical, coaxial, line, and Bluetooth, which you can also pair with Fios control app for some added flexibility. Rounding out the rest of the front panel is a power button, gain stage featuring high, medium, and low, and the output switch, DAC, preamp, or headphones. Turning the K9's volume potentiometer results in a smooth, fluid increase in sound versus sudden and jarring, but the unit also gradually raises the volume level when switching between sources or resuming a listening session after pressing play. A neat ear saving feature that I've only experienced once before in Oppo's HA2. The sound itself is typical AKM, smooth and velvety but still detailed. It's not tube level warm but it never feels overly clinical or sterile sounding and retains a sense of cleanliness without being harsh. It's advertised 278 milliwatts into 300 ohm, plus the low, medium, high gain stage ensures you'll always have plenty of power for any headphones paired, and I haven't had an issue with anything I've tried, including the 400 SE, Aria, HD600, K702, Caspian, Deva, and so forth. A back and forth comparison to the K5 Pro results in a slightly more refined, lush sound from the K9, one that opts for a smoother and more velvety presentation, emphasizing vocals and spacing a bit better. Voices seem more intimate, and the soundstage generally feels more expansive than the K9 Pro as well. Overall, the K5 Pro comes across as slightly more brash and prickly, for lack of a better word but the difference can be very subtle. What more could you ever want out of a DAC amp? The K9 Pro will pretty much be replacing every recommendation I have on my blog with regard to desktop slash best of amps and DACs. I don't foresee it leaving the top spot anytime soon and will also be linking to it from various other articles as I truly believe this is one of the best products for your money currently on the market. I'll probably still recommend the Zen or K5 Pro for beginners who don't want to spend a fortune right away, 
but even so, why not just go for the Gusto and never upgrade again? The K9 Pro is an astonishing cross-section of price to performance and value versus money spent. There are amps out there costing thousands of dollars that don't do a fraction of what this thing is capable of. Sure, their claim to fame may be quote unquote better sound, but you know better than that by now that those grand proclamations are rather hollow when you know the truth about amps and DACs. In my mind, $700 for this is a bargain considering everything we've discussed today. I'll leave links down below for where to buy it, but if you're interested in a 5,000 plus word post covering everything we've discussed today in greater depth and detail, click the link on screen and let me know if you have any questions, here in the comments and on the article itself. I'd be more than happy to help out.